All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Up and In Show. See how we just turn it on and we just go. We go from having a conversation to I'm going. all in. Yeah. Uh, we are not on the purple couch, unfortunately. We will get it back one day. We're working on it, I think. We actually do have to get that going. I'm um, kind of questioning why do we get rid of the purple couch? I mean, Just because we're in between moves right now. Okay. So at my collectible shop, that's where it was. It was staple. That's where I had all my guests. Probably my first 200 episodes were on that purple okay. couch for the most part. A few were sprinkled in. and uh, This is a fresh start. So this is a fresh start. Yeah. So this is a temporary holding <laughs> space. Okay. Our great friends at Sigma and Robbie Olivier um, have let us use this space in our holding time. So. What, a, what a great what a great group. That whole, amazing. Uh, amazing. You spoke amazing. to them the other day. I, I was did. There. I awesome. spoke to them. Everything counts. I did an everything counts thing, but it's more about this black curtain that everybody has and you can bring it down. I know. I mm -hmm. love it. I was, I was locked Thank in. You. Yeah. It was awesome to hear you speak. Um, if anybody doesn't know, we are sitting with legendary gymnastics coach, DD bro. She took the time to come over here to Sigma again. And we kind of linked up a week ago, what she's talking about, um, where you came and spoke to a bunch of leaders in our community and stuff. So, um, but thank you for the time. Seriously, this is a long time coming. I've wanted to sit down. I've been a fan from afar. Um, I appreciate what you've done for LSU sports, your energy that you bring, um, the, the program that you've built and, and the things that you get to, that we get to see now and live. Um, so it's a real honor to sit with you. Well, thank thanks. you for making the time. I appreciate, I appreciate that. It. You know, you talk about the build of a program and that, that took a lifetime, but, um, to, to retire and then be able to have your associate head coach and co-head coach, Jay Clark, take over and and really kind of come through COVID and just a little hiccup and, and, and a little bit of a slow giddy up. And once they got past the COVID and all of that to win a national championship, um, I'm yeah. really proud of him and what he's continued to do. Yeah, Jay's amazing. I, I look forward to sitting down with him one day and having a conversation. We were in, we, got, we were fortunate enough last year to be in some press conferences um, when we were covering some stuff that Abby was doing. So that was really cool. And just listening to him talk, uh, I think he's just a brilliant guy and just the way that he talks about his players and his program yeah. and stuff was really Well, you cool. know, th there's so much more that those coaches are having to navigate now. And, you know, a lot of times you, you're you a new coach in a program because the program was, was stuttering and struggling. And um, then you bring in a new guy or girl yeah. and um, for Jay to continue to do what he's doing. But then you look at the landscape of what they're having to deal with now. You know the the portal and the nil and then what's looming what's looks like it may come to fruition here um in the landscape of college athletics is it's really a um kind of an earthquake of a yeah. of a shift yeah well I'm, I'm one of our mutual good friends paul Maneri, right it it <laughs> took him by some he, he almost had to sit out a little while right? yeah yeah i talked to him last week actually Did you? And yeah he, that's good he, he's likes what he's doing he's it's um but it's a big change. And I asked him, I said, you know, what, how are you going to do NIL? How are you going to do this? You don't have to deal with the coaching. Yeah. And he goes, well, they're gonna, other people are going to do that. They're going to hire other people to do those things. <laughs> and I, I'm going to coach. I'm going to focus on coaching and rebuilding the program. That's good. So I really love him and I'm, and I'm wishing him all the very best. He's the best. He's like a second father to yes. me. Yeah, he's been very influential. And obviously, I mean, I always credit him of why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm able to do because of him. So and the opportunities that he gave me. So, um, yeah money he's a great dude um, but I'm excited to dive into your story I definitely want to talk about building the program and you know you said it took a lifetime so I would love to talk to you about patience and um, how that plays a role in doing that you know and seeing a long-term vision and, and getting people to buy in but I want to learn a little bit more about you first and where you're from and how gymnastics came into your life so can that, we start that's there? a long story okay. I said well, we that when to, I was little speaking bit of time. um I grew up in Donaldsonville, yeah. you know, small town girl. And, you know, how did how did a small town girl from Donaldsonville, eight kids in my family, I was third. Um, how? It started on Sister Marie's front porch, actually. Um, Pal Moe's sent Sherry Harris to Donaldsonville for a little satellite program. And I started taking on the front porch of one of the nuns at the Catholic school, Sister Marie. And if you're from Donaldsonville, you certainly know. Wow. Or you know of Sister Marie. That's awesome. And, um that that grow that it grew from there and you know then all of a sudden we were at the KC Hall and you know it was the numbers were growing and I really enjoyed the acrobatic part of it and so Miss Sherry asked my mom if she'd be willing to bring me to Baton Rouge they were starting a gymnastics program mm -hmm. at Palmoe's and um, my mother said well you know yeah I guess what'll well, evolve you know one day a week going to Baton Rouge and then it was two days a week <laughs> and it was three days a week and you know you just you grow 
in a sport just like anything else. But, you know, that was before travel ball and, right. and all of those things. But, you know, we traveled a lot. And, and gymnasts travel. They, they have to go to competitions. They have to be seen around the country. And um, that's my, mine grew to that. And um, Vanny Edwards, who was the Olympic, one of the Olympic coaches, when I was in high school, then he invited me to go and train there after I won the Junior Olympics and, and competed in San Diego and did a, did a great job um, training still with Pal Moe's and um, went to Southeastern, started training with him and just matriculated from high school. I was competing on the college team because yeah. I guess nobody was watching. <laughs> you know, nobody cared. Yeah. <laughs> and um, That's funny. Matriculated, started started school at Southeastern, and uh, in '72, it's kind of had my my goal, my dream was the '72 games, yeah. and I tore my knee. My um, first it was a cartilage, then it was an ACL, mm -hmm. and in the training process. So he encouraged me to to start coaching, want to help him coach one of the girls that I was a competitor with, wow. and she ended up being an alternate for the team wow. and yeah so i mean that you know that's kind of a sad story but then it had another another twist Probably, of an ending yeah. i i transferred to mm -hmm. lsu i wanted to get my degree from yeah. lsu and um fam we had a family tragedy and i wanted to be closer my brother was in the hospital in yeah. bat in baton yeah, yeah. our lady of the lake when it was really on the lake yeah <laughs> and uh, i had a construction accident and oh, man, was uh, in a coma for about about nine days. Oh my gosh! And at that time, I made an emotional decision. I'm going to leave Southeastern, go to LSU. I want to get my degree from LSU. Oh my god! So I did that, and then you know he passed away. So I was oh, at LSU and god. really didn't know anybody. Didn't have much direction. I started a gymnastics program at Breck, and was coaching at the national at the coaching and judging at the national level, and wow. still had a connection with Vanny Edwards and everything that he was he was doing. And it allowed me to, to judge nationals and, and judge big events. Wow. Then I get a phone call. Well, actually, I graduated and didn't didn't really have any have a job. Didn't know what I was going to do. I yeah. was like, okay, I'll go to graduate school. That's yeah. what everybody Just does. Stay in school a little longer. <laughs> That's what yeah. you got yeah. to stay in school. Because <laughs> yeah. I was running a Breck program and making enough money to survive. And um, I heard that the St. Joseph's Academy had a one of their physical education teachers was pregnant and was going to be on maternity leave and they were looking for somebody to fill in. So I went over there and got the job, signed a contract, wow. and I'm sitting around the pool on a Sunday afternoon with my dad and I get a phone call and it's um, Mary Camille Treyweek Maddox and she said, hey, my father-in-law would like to talk to you about coming and interviewing for the job. They're going to start the gymnastics program as a club and they're going to make it a varsity sport wow. would you be interested i said i don't know mary camille i i just signed a contract i said and my daddy's like really <laughs> and so i said well let me let me call you back and my daddy's like wait a second you have an opportunity to go to lsu and interview <laughs> right. for a job st joseph's academy lsu you know does the old balancing with his hands <laughs> and i said yeah you're right so i called her back and i came and interviewed like three or four people interviewed and i got they gave me the job and it was uh, interesting because I went in to see Carl Maddox, who anybody that remembers Carl Maddox, he was he was a handful. Okay. He was, I mean, dot your eyes, cross your T's. Okay, well, okay, I was going to say, military what kind of handful? Guy. Okay, what kind of handful? I mean, yeah. if you did a travel voucher, a travel advance, or, or turned in a request for equipment or anything. Very by the book. If you particular. had a, a, a grammatical error, if, if you put a comma where you shouldn't have had a comma, you got it back Oof. with red ink on it. Oh, my God. And then you, you, had to re, you had to correct it before you could give it back to yeah. him. Yeah, oh, my God. So, anyway, he was my first experience. And Pat Newman, who has, is, has both of these wonderful people have since passed away. Mm -hmm. But uh, Pat Newman was the coordinator of women's sports back in 1976, 77, 78. And my experience coming to LSU happened in 1977. Okay. And um, Pat Newman was just incredible. Wow. She, uh, she came to LSU. She was at LSU. She was a tennis coach okay. of the tennis club. And it was okay. one of the first programs that they made a varsity sport. Okay. And Paul Merle, Dr. Merle, who was the chancellor at the time, sent, she worked for him in his office in the Dean of Women's Staff. And because she was a tennis player, okay. oh, well, then you be the tennis coach. Right. So she went out, went down there, and she was coaching tennis, and then they made her the coordinator of women's sports. And Dr. Merle was really the father of 
women's athletics okay. and, and pushing hmm. to begin women's sports. Really? You know, okay. it happened at the conference level. They had a meeting and um, – Maybe 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 Carl wasn't a hundred percent all in on this women thing. <laughs> maybe that's why he was on you guys so much. On the- <laughs> and, but but God bless God yeah. bless Paul Merle. Yeah, because you know he he Made sent sure Pat was, down there and said yep. you know we're going to have women's sports. We're going to give them scholarships. We're going to give them a place to practice. We're going to we're going to support them just like we do our men's sports. Wow. That that kind of sounded like Title Nine, yeah. you know. Yeah. So um, when and, did Title Nine come? Was that well? They signed it in seventy two, okay, but it okay. didn't trickle down the river say, until right. uh, well, it didn't hit Baton Rouge until Paul Merle and Pat Newman. Gotcha. And um, then Baton you know Rouge you have the so many incredible people <laughs> like Bill Bankhead, you know, who's still here. We just inducted him into the yeah, LSU yeah, Hall of absolutely. Fame. He ran the PMAC. He was doing all the intramural work. When he got out of the wow. service, he was doing all the intramural work, and um, he kind of was the incubator for sports. Yeah. And um, the club came from his program. Our swimming team came from the the incubator that he had. Our men, we had a men's club before we had a men's team. So you know, you have all these incredible people that were really supportive. Yeah, yeah. Of Ernie Hill, you know, he said they wanted me to go back and and do the old Jim Armory and and pull some old equipment and put it in that awful dingy place that had been condemned. Yeah. And um, Ernie says, I said, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not, let's find, find, there's gotta be something else. Yeah. You know, I didn't sign on for this. And he said, well, I'll give you a corner of the field house. And I'm, Cause he was the director of the field house yeah. and he used to coach baseball. And um, so wild. he gave me a corner of the field house. And then that little corner of the field house began to grow and grow and grow <laughs> until I had the entire yeah. side of the field well, house, how did which you was do the this? indoor yeah. practice facility. Wow. So, like, you look at a day like yeah. today, and we would have had to pull our equipment back so that the football team could come in uh-huh. and we could still get some kind of practice. And Charlie Mack would come over and lean against a little wood wall that Ernie put up, and he'd lean against it, you know, and he was just, you know, so proud of, of the fact that what, you know, what we're doing yeah. here. And, you know, and he was, he was also a huge fan of gymnastics okay. and yeah. what, a, what a great guy he was. But, um, yeah, Carl Sounds- Maddox and, and – then, you know, Carl got on board and said, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, and the, the, the really the pa- most painful thing of all was the fact that the men really thought that they, we were taken away from them. Right. Anything that we got, we got it because they were taken away from them. And, and that really was not the case. Yeah. You know, and it, it you see what we have now at LSU. And yeah. I'm, I'm just hoping that all of that hard work and all those all those years of, of, of really fighting and refusing to go back, refusing to go backwards, um, is not going to change with this 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 new evolution of what's going to happen yeah. in, in college yeah, sports so. today. Yeah, but um, that's pretty. You know that that's that's my story. Well, and that's amazing. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of little rivers and tentacles that come off that story, but um, that's that's the the root of it. Well, that's amazing, and it sounds like there's been a lot of influential people to help you do some of the things you've done. But um, it, what I took from that is you know, life threw things at you in multiple different ways, right? From tragedy to your career ending, but always you found a way to pivot and figure out a way yeah. and didn't really take no for an answer. Or well, you too. know, and you, you look at the, the, the history and the years and, you know, Sue Gunner, everything that, that she went through and our women's track program and, you know, how wonderful it's been. When we started, when, when Paul Dietzel started the track program, I don't think he had a vision of, they were going to outrun and outjump the men's program. Yeah. And, and then we've done a good job, you know, keeping, keeping them even. But when you look at the number of, of national championships and you can't say, oh, well, they won that because it's easier for the women to win a national championship. Yeah. That's not true. No. If, if that's not true, you know, women would be winning, winning Absol- many more yeah, than we are. Yeah. You know, you look at our, our women's basketball program and what Kim has done with that program in a short amount of time. It's crazy. You know, oh, it's- yeah. And, and I, I am so gratified because I know the battles. I know the fights. I know the in the trenches that that Sue Gunner. Yeah. Thought. Well, well, talk to me a little bit about that. Right. Because you're in a male dominated world. You're literally innovating. And I, I think about this and. It's, it is crazy to me, right, at my age and probably some of the listeners and stuff to hear that women didn't have certain sports, right? And I equated to, I remember three Super Bowls ago, I was having a party at my house for the Super Bowl and they were like, the first woman referee in a Super Bowl game. And, and I was like, that. yeah, and I was like, I leaned over and I was like, yeah. that's, first of all, how crazy is that? Like, that that's, that 
it hasn't happened yet in 2024. And right. how crazy is that we have to make an announcement? And then I was like, think about 20 years from now. Like, we're just going to see women out, like, doing it normally. But this is a monumental thing for women. So, like, that's kind of what I hear you were doing. And we look back on it and we all take it for granted. So, yeah. I always think that that's – and, I mean, obviously, they're trailblazing and doing different things now. But that sounds like that was – throughout your whole tenure, you were always doing yeah, that, Yeah, but, you know, marketing. Yeah. Marketing. I mean – the, f the fact, you know, you, you see these billboards for men's sports, and I'm talking in the 80s, you know, billboards and things and for the for the men's sports. And, you know, I go in and, hey, you know, the gymnastics team, you know, we're finished sixth in the nation. We're, you know, we won the first ever yeah. SEC championships, and now they're taking things away from us. And, I mean, it was just really a difficult fight. You literally had to go in there and you fight and be like, hey, why is this happening to us? Exactly. Right? Oh, my God. And the best answer was because. Yeah, and they're just like, well, this is <laughs> well, it's the way it is, right? It's, or, it's how it yeah, is, you it's know. How it it's, is. it's like water's wet, rocks are hard. Yeah, and you're like, what? I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I understand that, but you know, when you go in and you say, "Well, marketing, you're marketing, and you're putting up these billboards for the men," well, you know, and they'll say, "Well, did you know they really don't work? You know, they, they, we just put them up, but they really, they really don't work." I'm like, "Well, if they really don't work, take them down." Yeah, exactly. Take them down. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it was, wasn't was long, and then, you know, we're seeing a women's basketball billboard, a women's gymnastics billboard. Congratulations mm -hmm. for, you know, this championship or that yeah. or the runner-up. Yeah. or And now you're seeing women's sports billboards so, as often yeah. as you see mm -hmm. men's. And the the equal pay thing, you know, you when you look at, at what Dawn Staley has done, yeah. whether you're a fan or not, right. um, what Kim Mulkey has done, yeah. and the equal pay for doing an equal Absolutely. Job. Absolutely. You know, so I mean it, it is happening in some places. Yeah. Um the, the the we can't seem to get it right at the state level. Yeah. You know, equal pay for you know, I mean, you know, you fight this battle all the time, but at the same time, um you I look at what Title IX has done for women's athletics mm -hmm. and I just hope that these coaches that are in the trenches now, that they realize that battle and they do everything that they can to to keep their footing. Yeah. What what was the mindset like? Like what what would your advice be to those coaches? Like, because I would imagine you had some sort of vision. Did you I don't know, did you visualize what it is today and like that you were gonna build that? Oh my I God, always, I love that. always believed. I love that. You know, always believed. Um, you know, getting up at six in the morning to do a two minute segment. Yeah of exercise with Coach Didi on yeah. Buckskin Bill. I got a phone call from Buckskin Bill. I didn't get a phone call from anybody that owned Channel 9. It was Buckskin Bill that called me and said, hey, Didi, you have this idea. Would you be willing to do it? I said, hey, absolutely. That would be a great thing for the sport, not just at LSU, right. but at the grassroots level. Absolutely. You know, we, wow, I didn't know I, that we had gymnastics programs all over town, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sitting on the floor doing exercises cool. and, with kids at, at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah before they go to school. And so you look at the vision that Buckskin Bill had and everything that his vision turned into, mm -hmm. but it's always been, you know, I always dreamt, I always knew that if I fought hard enough and refused to, to go back, mm -hmm. that good things were gonna happen. And, you know, my, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Mm. So, I mean, I was called a lot of stuff. I was put down a lot. I was, you know, kind of, if, you know, if we ignore us, you'll go away. <laughs> and I never went away. Yeah. I never went away. And what happened was other coaches began to see what, what, you were, what we were doing, yeah. what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And they began to do the same thing. And I, yeah. I tell you what, Skip Bartman, he told me one day I was in his office, like it was, Bad, 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 bad time, bad time. And I went to it, went in his office, and he's like, Didi, you just keep pushing, keep doing what you're doing, do what I do, G join the Rotary. Every time you get an invitation to speak, wear your LSU colors, wear wear an LSU jacket. Yeah. I don't care where you go, what you do, do what I do. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And so I did. You <laughs> yeah. know, I did. I started yeah. doing going to Win Dixie and giving out tickets. And I remember you saying that in the meeting the other yeah. day. And I was like, it reminded me of, I'm sorry to interrupt you, no, go but ahead. Mark Cuban saying that he went door to door to start his first sales business, right? And like people see yeah. the final result, right? They see you now, they see the stadium, they see the 14,000, they see the national championship, mm -hmm. but they didn't know it started that way, you know? And that but kind you know, of when crazy. I, when I, when I, I talk and, and people like, they remember that I was on Buckskin Bill. Mm -hmm. They remember, I remember you being at that grocery store giving out tickets. Yeah. I remember that happening. I remember you giving out coloring sheets, but 
not only was I, was I doing it, but I had other gymnastics teams around the country. What are you doing? How right. are you growing your program? Right. I'd call Alabama, uh, Georgia, I mean, anybody, Utah. And we were sharing ideas. That's we cool. were sharing our salaries. We were sharing what we weren't getting. Right. In con- I didn't even have a contract. So it was it was a very united effort at the, at the cool. grassroots yeah, yeah. level. And uh, But I would have to give a lot to Skip Bertman because That's then awesome. he became athletic director. Yeah. The, the climate changed. The earth shifted and um, got bonuses. Nice. I, go in, I went in his office after, our, after a season. He had a great season. You did this, you did this, you did this. He knew. And he said, your bonus is going to be in your next paycheck. I went, well, what? Wow. I'm like, what? Yeah, cool. He said, your bonus. You've never gotten a bonus? I said, no, sir. I've never gotten a bonus. He said, well, you're going to get one now. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, He's such a legend. Yeah. yeah. But, he, I mean, he created that culture for baseball, and the reason that a kid from New Jersey came down here, right, mm-hmm. all that marketing, and he literally told me he was on my show, and that's what I asked him. I was so infatuated with the way that he was like, I made people believe, and that's what I feel like you have done. And again, I would have never thought I would have went to a gymnastics meet in college. I've been like, cool, like maybe I was dating a girl or something, you know. Like, I don't know. But now I, I genuinely <laughs> love going to We had a lot of baseball them. players coming to gymnastics yeah. meets. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> there was definitely yeah. a lot of crossover during my <laughs> time. There a lot there. of them, yeah. <laughs> Pete uh, Bush is still a fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I love. I do genuinely love it. Yeah. And, and, and I go there and I have a, arguably a better time than I do. And I love basketball. So that, that kind of competes with it a little bit. But the entertainment value, how – into it everybody is there's constant action during the meets exactly. too exactly that's and the you know fun why? part why because the women's coaches women gymnastics coaches around the country when we began to get a little bit of tv we started begging for more yeah. what can we do to make our product sell better on right. tv how can we fix our event they gave us a list of things that they wanted us to do that's cool we did every one of them in spades i yeah. mean every single one of them they asked us the, the next thing you know we're live our, our championship is live. And then they come back and say, you know what? Y'all got this six team format. We need to, y'all need to change that. You need to do, because at first we sold it where you can, you do golf live Yeah. now on the 18th hole. Oh, now, you right. know, and back you on flashed, the gym. Yeah, yeah exactly. you, they go back and forth. We can do that. And so that that's how we sold it to wow. them. It's well, okay, you're right. We can do that. And then it got so good. They said, well, okay, y'all, we gave you this. Now you need to give us this. And we went to a four team on the floor format for the national championships. We can run it in an hour and like 40 minutes. It's a two Genius. hour program. Yeah, yeah. And we were willing to bend and not break. And there are other men's sports and, and some women's sports out there that refuse to change. Yeah. This is this is how our sport is done. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. If you want to be on TV, if you want to be relevant, and that's one thing I have fought my entire career. I wanted gymnastics to be relevant. That's I wanted to have a presence. Yeah. I wanted to people people to appreciate it. And you don't have to understand it. Yeah. You can just come and go, wow, uh, that was good. Yes. And you know if, if they stick their landings <laughs> yeah. and yeah. don't wobble right. or step around. You know the or, basics, yeah. They're going to get a good score. Yeah. And people are now really questioning the judging questioning the and that's when you know you've arrived yeah no it's been it's really has been a cool journey to learn the sport to see the sport to go to the events and see the energy one of the things i love about an nba game is they play music during the game that's the thing you know the girls Mm -hmm. have different routines there's music playing there's good energy there's you know constant just good energy in the building so you know in between events you've got about five minutes to run to the bathroom or go to concessions. And that's why gymnastics sells a ton of concessions because people know Ah, that you're going to get a concession period here. You're going to hear, we got like four concession periods here at gymnastics meet. So we sell concessions. Absolutely. I mean, it's important. You want to be relevant, not, not just as a sport, but you want to be relevant in the community as as a source of entertainment. Absolutely. And that's what gives you value. And that's what creates the, the relevance of a yeah, sport in the absolutely. community. You literally just used all three words that I wanted to use with you or like ask you about because again, right, building a business, building a brand like gymnastics, coaching a team, kind of like running a business, right? There's certain things that are similar. And what I always tell our group of, you know, we have content creators, we have media people, right. we also have an in-store experience, right? What the value is to people. We have to always understand what our value is to people. That's how they're going to come back. That's how they're going to want to choose to spend their money with us right. and that kind of stuff. So um, to hear you say that organically, was awesome because I'm, I was going to just ask that. So is that something that was ingrained in you or did you learn it by, just by experience? 
and stuff, but well, being part of the community. You know, when when you're surrounded by really good people, like like I was through the years at LSU, and you know, you had Jerry DiNardo. Mm -hmm. As good as he was, he was about the campus senate. Mm -hmm. He was about the students being treated better. He was he was about the general student population as much as he was about his team. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, his his downfall, he, he was great, and then it began to wane down. He had great a great staff, and he started replacing his staff with with rising GAs, you know, and and Just not good. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. It takes a 10 to hire a 10. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if if you're if you're a 10 Football coach, like I think Brian Kelly is, hire a 10. Yeah. And that's what he's done. He went and got some, surrounded himself with 10s. Yeah. And I think that's what Kim Mulkey did. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jay Clark, yeah. and that's what I did when I hired Jay Clark, Bob yeah, Moore. Look, yeah. It takes a 10 to hire a 10. Don't be afraid to hire somebody that's going to challenge you like to be it. your very best. Well, absolutely. And that's, and what that's what's want. happening. And I look at the the ideas and the things that Jay is now bringing to the table. He's 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 going to start this exclusive club, and I don't want to say. I know he sent out invitations, yeah. but it's a, a whiskey and wine club oh, where cool. they're yeah. going to meet at different locations. Genius. And um, it's kind of a be a you know a small group yeah, and exclusive I'm excited VIP about it. Yeah. You know, and, and when he first did it, it was going to be wine, and I said I think I mean it was going to be whiskey. Yeah. I, said, I think you mean to add a little wine. In yeah, that. yeah, yeah. There you go. But nice, um, smart. so I mean, there's some. Jay's got a lot of creative ideas and things that I think that are going to cool. generate some yeah. stuff. And, yeah. you know, we're in the process of fundraising. And um, I work for TAF, actually, as an ambassador. Do you? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it really is. Okay. It really is fun. I'm learning nice. a whole yeah. different side. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, but probably similar a little bit to what you did, like in the sense of like always getting people on board, right? Oh, kind yeah. of selling the that fans coming the to the thing. When, you know, Joe Oliva finally said, yeah, yeah, we'll, we're I'll, we're going to build a gymnastics training center. But I was talking about it for a long time. I would go to TAF meetings and talk about this, this incredible yeah. training facility yeah. that y'all are going to build. And these guys would look at each other and go, are we building a gym? <laughs> you almost <laughs> convinced them. You're <laughs> yeah. like, no, I incepted no, really. this idea. Y'all yeah, just talk actually. among yourselves. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. we, I'll have all the plans. Just <laughs> let me know when you guys are ready to write the check. Yeah, It'll be finally, good. Yeah. You know, finally, Joe Oliva was like, I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to build you that gymnastics training center. And, you know, people wanted to give. People yeah. wanted to help. And so right now we're in the process. We, we, we've run out of office space. We don't have office spaces awesome. for the for the ex extended staff yeah. and, and what we have, what, what we've built in that incredible training center. You know, we've had so many generous donations for that to happen. But we've got to we've got to get get on that generate that yeah. that generating some money and some donations again to uh enhance cool. the facility yeah. so you know we met about that yesterday so i'm excited about that very nice but, you know there's just yeah. so many things happening happening at lsu with a lot of let's talk about season tickets for volleyball and it's fixing to start I know, and I'm i think excited. their push is to try to get 1200 seats so if you're a volleyball fan if you're not a volleyball fan i think I think it's really an exciting sport. I love, it's fast. I love volleyball. The action is fast. It's and explosive. there's really not a lot of time to go to the concession no, yeah, stand. Yeah, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> so get it going in. Constant action. Yeah. Yes. It's very explosive sport. No, yes. it is. I love what you still do with LSU. Um, one of the things that I've been curious about, though, is especially with somebody that started a program from scratch, left it the way you did, 30-something, 40 years, right, in between – how, when you have such big visions, and I guess this would probably be advice for me or for other people that are even aspiring athletes, right? We all have these grand visions, but it takes a ton of patience. And it, you know, there's little wins along the way, but how do you stay patient? How do you employ, you know, teach patience to your players and, you know, that we're not at our destination, but we still got to go compete and all that? I'm not real strong on patience. I'm strong on perseverance. I like that. I can outlast you. I can, I can really dig in and outlast and you know and i think it's patience i not so much okay. yeah you know? i like it no no but no, if you have a vision mm -hmm. you have to work on your vision like and, yeah. and share your vision yeah. but when you when you persevere through something it really has meaning yeah you know hey i persevered i i know what's i know what's back there that's why i'm not going back no. you know <laughs> i know what i know what it's like to have nothing absolutely you know so to be able to to be able to get little wins and have a victory every day is kind of what I was into for 43 years. That's awesome. And I like that too because I guess I've always thought patience is the right word, but I now that you're kind of explaining it, 
Persevere is definitely there. And it's just a little bit more of a shift. Patience really is a reframing. virtue. Yeah. That's a virtue, you know. But perseverance is is a is a mindset and something you can build yeah and yeah. something you can make stronger and mm -hmm. that's kind of i always talk to abby about you know she's building this media side of things and you know reframing your perspective on things and that's like yeah. I, I really like perseverance versus patience because mm -hmm. even patience but when i was saying it too like i don't want to be patient with doing the wrong thing you know like i want to yeah. be i want to make my mistake learn and grow and move yeah. on you know and that's yeah. you're more patient with it with a child yeah. you know you're patient if you're <laughs> helping your six six right. year old grandson to read your patience and mm. you have to be patient in that process like yeah but if you're if you're insurmountable obstacles mm -hmm. and you're swimming upstream all yeah. the time you better persevere. be ready to persevere i like it um what about motivation team like getting your team on board and getting them to believe in the vision that you were kind of selling them and getting them because that's what always great coaches kind of did for me but what was something that you know you learned throughout your journey there to enthusiasm to be able to... nice enthusiasm um i just i really i believe that if, if i'm if i was not the most enthusiastic person about gymnastics nobody else was going to be. I believe that if I didn't bring my enthusiasm and my energy, whether my team at that moment perceived it as negative energy because I was getting yeah, it, yeah, get, yeah. get the job done yeah, yeah. or positive energy, but you got to bring the energy Absolutely. and you can't run hot and cold. I love it. You got to be, you've got to be consistent. Consistency wins. And I was consistently tenacious in this is your assignment. Get it done. Let's go get it done and it. keep a record of it. I want to know how many routines you're doing. Let's keep a record of it and how many you hit, how many falls we have. And that, you know, the, the, the drills and the build up drills and the strength drills and things that we did every single day was part of the process. And I, I, I really believed in the vision, mm -hmm. but you had to stay in the process mm -hmm. to realize your vision. Absolutely. And you definitely bring all the energy. So that's, uh, I, I mean, that's one of the things I've always appreciated about you from afar was um, how passionate you were, you know, and that, and you can just see it. And when you go to the, the meets, that's what you feel as a fan. So I think you've done, an, a, it's a pretty, it's gotta be pretty cool for you to see that, you know, for 40 years later and stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, the thing about winning the national championship this year, most of a lot of those kids were mine yeah. kids that i i had helped recruit kids that i had coached uh ashley nat coaching yeah. the winning routine on the winning event yep. at the national championships i had been on that floor coaching her when she dismounted and got the score that put us over and we beat florida to finish second you know runner up mm -hmm. we were runner up four times how, yeah that's i mean four so times hard. runner up <laughs> but when you said that the other day i was like <laughs> yeah oh yeah so you know and then, and then but there are some times when we finished third or, or sixth that those were monumental victories too mm -hmm. but you know you, you come sense. home yeah. with a, a sixth place you know we get a the, trophy and yeah. we, you come home with it and the first thing that the athletic director does is take away my assistant coaches <laughs> i'm like what this is you know that's a real thing that's a that, real thing oh you know that's God. a real thing like, but you know you can hire some student assistants or i've got this guy on my staff who you know really i don't have a, i have a use for him so you can train him to be a coach <laughs> like what no, we're not we're not we're not doing that and so you just we're say no in those no, moments. no sir like, yeah so <laughs> i didn't say no i said no sir yeah. <laughs> no, put sir. some of the little politeness on it <laughs> yeah but in, in in okay so walk me through that scenario or a scenario like that right like you can't just say no and be like i'm done like and throw a temper tantrum you have to show some sort of value of why that coach is or go fundraise some more money? Is that more of what you had to do to, well, at, to at, do things at like that? Well, at that time, it was a matter of, you know, finding some, a couple of guys that wanted, I, need, I needed a male spotter. Yeah. And um, as much as I could spot as I could do, but there's four events, four right. gymnastics events. Right. And you can't just practice one event and then go to the next event with the whole team. You have to be able to train the, the, running backs, train yeah. the receivers, train yeah. the linemen, train the special teams, Absolutely. all of that. It's no different. Yeah. So that, that was my, that was my case. Gotcha. You know, I, yeah. but consequently I had it's to like find you got, some you guys. You have 97 coaches that's for the right. football team. Like, can well, I just have three? A, yeah, but yeah, it's a bit much, but, yeah. um, no. you know, their assistants have assistants, right. but <laughs> it, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, somebody started it. No, absolutely. Somebody, somebody did it the yeah. first time, yeah. but, um, 
you just make your case. Yeah. And, and at that point in time, I was able to bring in a couple of Very nice. guys yeah. that were spotters, that, that coaches. They wanted to aspire to be gymnastics coaches and go on and have that as a career. And I was able to root them out and find them. And, and I had to have something right now. So that's what happened. Yeah. And then um, eventually the turnover and athletic directors and the reality of this is unrealistic what they're asking you to do. Right. So, you know, you just you make the best of a bad wow. situation and plow forward and don't go backwards. Yeah. And it was it was difficult. I it bet. was difficult, you yeah. know, and it's you gotta know, be you, frustrating too. Just like you talk about mindset, I guess perseverance is like yeah. the right word there. Yeah, that's you just, get, you're just get, like, you're chopping you, my legs out. You yeah. get exactly, but you, you get in the mindset of, I'm going to thank them for every crumb that they give me. Right. And eventually they're going to think they're going to give me a whole loaf of bread. <laughs> and that's pretty much what yeah. would happen. Yeah. You know, you just, you plow forward, you make the mess, the best of a bad situation. Yep. You continue to, to win, continue to thrive. And, you know, you reach a point where all of a sudden it drops off and your team doesn't even qualify the national mm. championships because you're, you know, you just, the odds are against you. Yeah. And then you, you put it back together. You recruit as though your life depends upon it because it does. Yeah. Literally. You know, it's, it's all about recruiting yeah. and you, you rebuild and then you get a new administration. They allow you to hire assistant coaches and you build that program back up. Yeah. And that's, what we've done through the yeah. years and you, you look at the you look at the win loss record and you know on a scale and you go wow that was a dip wow look look where they are now yeah. and you know you just fight through it yeah, but you, you know, ride the waves yeah, yeah. Just, joe we'll, oliva allowing yeah. me to bring in jay clark was yeah. a huge because you know he had been let go from georgia yeah. that and, was my last question so i was going to ask you yeah talk to me about the jay how how we have jay that's <laughs> that's the case of it takes a 10 to hire a 10 um, I knew I knew what I needed, mm -hmm. and Jay Clark had it. Gotcha. And it's that that it factor, mm -hmm. that that self confidence, and that um, conviction of a winner. Yeah. He had that, and Georgia did not treat him right. They just did him so wrong, and he didn't know if he wanted to go back to coaching. Wow. He was head coach over there. Mm -hmm. wow. And you know, I called him and I said, "Look, I know exactly what's going to happen." I know what, what they're going to do. They're going to come after my assistant. They're going to hire this girl. She's going to come after my assistant coach. I've already given him warning. If he if he if he sniffs at going for another interview, he's done. Yeah. He said, "Do you really believe that's going to happen?" I said, "Yes, I believe it's going to happen." I went to see Joe, and Joe said, "Well, whatever it takes to hire him." We'll do it. Wow. Well, and then he didn't realize what it was going to take. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that was a lot bigger than I actually anticipated. Yeah. <laughs> but he was, you know, he, board, he, he allowed me yeah. to make him an associate. He allowed me to pay him uh, a fair, uh, what other yeah, co yeah, assistant yeah. coaches in yeah. the conference were making, yeah. enough to bring him and his family here. Wow. And um, awesome. the rest is history. Wow. Like I said, That's you know, he, awesome. he, he, he's he got great appeal. Yeah. He's um, really smart. And, you know, we, a lot of, a lot of, uh, great ideas and, 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 and just, yeah. he functions at a real high level yeah. and that's exactly what I needed. I needed someone that had the equal energy, the equal enthusiasm, but was a better recruiter. Gotcha. And did you know that you were pivoting away from being a head coach at some point and you were kind of like, really, no? but, you okay. know, I was, pro I don't know how old I was then. I was probably in my sixties. Okay. I mean, I was, I'm yeah, 71 so. now, but I was in my sixties. And by the way, you look incredible for 71. There's your energy, everything <laughs> don't, like, don't it's say that because everybody out there that's 71 is going to go, God, I must really look bad. <laughs> no. but, Hopefully they don't compare themselves. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, he, I just knew, I knew he was, he, he shared a vision. You know, we didn't have the new training center. Yeah. He shared a vision. He built one at Georgia. I nice. knew he knew yeah. what it would take. Yeah. And now we had Joe Oliva that was on board. And, you know, I was out. I'm, I'm going to 32 cents a piece. Bricks are 32 cents a piece. I'm going to build this facility if I have to do it one brick at a time. I love this one. That's incredible. And all of a sudden, you know, people were like, well, you know, we'll give. We'll yeah. give. And Tiger Athletic Foundation, you know, they you talking about carrying that cross up Calgary Hill. That organization, I mean to tell you, is is the carrying every single burden up up that hill to make LSU's facilities and the coaches yeah. and any anything that we need is yeah. falling on them. Yeah. And they they are do a remarkable job. Remarkable job. When you look at Tiger Stadium and you oh, know how we've maintained it's crazy. that it is, that's a beast. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's and just beast. I mean all the facilities yeah. that we have, like you said, I think 
Um, again, that's why another reason that Abby's here and we have an LSU show because it's so iconic to me. I re- and LSU does such a g- good job of being where they need to be to provide their athletes resources, their students resources, yep. right? Um, so I mean, they really do a great job. They do. But, you know, it's, it's, it's the coaches that – you know the story about the tiger and the gazelle, right? Mm. Yeah. The I tiger wakes up every morning. It's got to uh, outrun the gazelle. Yeah. You told us. Uh, yeah, I told the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and the moral of the story is – when your feet hit the ground every morning, you wake up, you better hit the ground running because you will either eat or be eaten. Yeah. And it's the coaches out there that don't want to be eaten. They're, they're running and doing everything that they can, promoting their programs themselves. They're marketing their program. They're in the community. They're doing everything that they can to not just survive, but to sustain and achieve. And it's those coaches that are successful. Nice. You yeah. look at what Kim has done. Oh my God. That's look what at, I was thinking that with yeah. Kim too. It's pretty I mean, unbelievable. Jay Johnson has <laughs> blinders on. Yeah. That's you know? all he does. Yeah. That's all he does. <laughs> yeah. He I mean, only thinks with a with a business brain. Yeah. What a great guy. <laughs> oh, he's amazing. What a great guy. He's awesome. You know, but you look at, at that and you look at Jay Clark and I know what he's planning. I know what he's doing. And you know, I'm like, I'm with you. Yeah. What? Put me in, coach. Yeah. Tell me what you want me to help you do. Is he a Georgia man? Because well, I, I didn't know that the, he was I, with Georgia before because this offseason was I don't a little... want to disclose his closet gotcha. secret, <laughs> but he does cheer for Georgia. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if he was like born and raised. Is he? Is oh, he, yeah. Okay. That's what oh, I was yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and good friends with was with Mark wow. Ricks. Good, good friends oh with God. Mark. And, and So this decision and to stay friends, here was. His decision to come. And then when they tried to hire him after the amazing, national yeah. championship. Yeah. That decision after that, uh, I didn't know that I don't there was know that much LSU, heaviness. Yeah. I don't know if LSU really knows how close. Wow. It was. It or, was. Yeah. 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 Well, I, yeah. I had heard everything that I read was like, oh, man, are we going to lose him? Like, that's that would be wild. Well, yeah. they well, came to the table. Said, yeah. They came to the table and, and, and did the right thing. And now we're trying to improve their office situation yeah, because they're they're using folding tables. <laughs> <laughs> for, that many bodies in, yeah yeah folding tables literally <laughs> wow that's incredible yeah yeah i'm sure lsu will figure it out <laughs> well we will yeah. we'll get it done yeah absolutely uh well dd well actually i have one more question this is you keep we, saying that i know i know i promise i'm letting i promise you this is actually <laughs> the last one, one more well we you just have a great conversation you just keep spitting stuff back at me oh, and i'm, I'm like we just keep rolling um how does an individual win a national championship so you know, when say if the team doesn't qualify. OK, so that's what it is. If the team does not qualify, then the there are other teams that are in the regional uh-huh. event. Mm-hmm. If there's an all arounder on that team who is um, like the next one up. Yeah. The highest one in that in that region uh-huh. or say they won an event at the regional championships, they can qualify to move forward. That's mm. pretty simple. Gotcha. They can qualify to move forward to the national championships in gotcha. the in the preliminary the first day when yeah. there's eight teams in the championship that's when they compete for the individual titles gotcha. so like lsu might have one individual all around her with them and maybe somebody that won their vaulting mm-hmm. at you know at their home regional gotcha. so they'll compete and they're competing Haley bryant you know won the national title uh she was overall but any of those individuals that were in the all around had every opportunity to to win it gotcha and it's not a separate competition it's Mm -mm. just the scores that they do just the score they do in the preliminary qualifying and they eliminate Hmm. two teams from the first rotation and two teams from the second rotation go into the team finals for for the four teams gotcha okay and it was interesting this year you know oklahoma was the highest ranked team yeah and they just had a horrible championship yeah just really did not was was not their usual performance and LSU capitalized on that and of course you had a great field because you still had Utah and and it was crazy all the powerhouses yeah Yeah. everybody was it it was just somebody wasn't going to make it yeah and Oklahoma didn't and LSU and you know to do it on their last event with the last performer amazing in New Orleans it was in New Orleans too right uh, no that that was was the SEC SEC. we won that one too yeah exactly yeah Yeah. hosted to win it yep that's awesome well, Didi, I'm done. I promise. I could sit here and ask you a million more questions. This has been an honor for me. Like I said, I've been a fan uh, for a very long time. It's been um, been great to watch you build this program. I was here playing when you were here coaching and stuff. So this is um, truly an honor. Thank you for the time. I know you could be doing anything else in the world. So I appreciate it. It was my pleasure. I've had fun. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for asking me. Yes.